Hello YouTube, uh, this is my second video I promised that I was going to do today on supercapacitors and what uses I have of mine. I just went over the fact that I have a supercapacitor used as a buffer between my battery bank and my uh, um, inverter. Basically the, the capacitor takes the uh, large surge and basically drags it out for my battery so that my batteries don't have a heavy draw whenever my AC unit or compressor comes on for my freezer or even if I'm running my well um, they basically won't draw so heavy on my batteries that they become so he heavily sulfated that I have to spend hours sulfating them. Um, real quick I'm just going to recap what a, um, a capacitor is because I had someone ask me in detail what what it does. Um, basically the difference between a battery and a capacitor or a super capacitor in my case is this. Um, basically batteries they they have to um, be um, they basically have to be charged to a standard. They have to um, go up somewhere around 13, 14, 15 volts to make a 12 volt battery. And they have to stay at that voltage for so many hours so that a chemical reaction can break down the, the um, sulfate and um, the, the, the battery acid into basically you know something that's going to be usable whenever it does start to turn the chemical process back into electricity. Um, with a super capacitor or any type of capacitor, um, you basically have a film that has a uh, low resistance that can hold um, basically uh, energy and not have it be released until, it was, until a moment's notice. Now, most capacitors, they're made so that as soon as you do hook up a load to it, um, they discharge immediately. Now, obviously, when you have somewhat of a regulated process, it doesn't do so as immediate. But being that I have my system rated at 15 volts, basically the linear line between, um, you know, a battery and the, uh, I'm sorry, between a supercapacitor and the curved line of a battery makes my system a little bit better. Uh, for instance, if, uh, if my system or my capacitors is at 12.7 volts, um, I'm only going to be pulling, if I'm pulling 12 amps, um, I'm going to continue to pull 12 amps. And 12 amps will draw into the battery is complete, oh, I'm sorry, the capacitor is all the way down to zero volts. Whereas a battery cannot do that. If, you, if you're familiar, batteries will only go down to 10.5 volts before they're declared dead. And when they are dead, they are very hard to recover from. That's why most companies and most battery makers will recommend that you only cycle your batteries down to 50%. I've heard people go as low as 40% and you know it's a little bit of a danger in that because of your batteries actually um, draining far past um, where it's hard to recover from from the uh, from the sulfate levels um, I mean I've done so I've killed some batteries in the past and experience and you know it's very expensive to do so because if you do have them wired up in parallel for instance your units are going to think of the um, sulfated battery as a load and they're going to continually try to re um, resupply the voltage that, and the amperage that it's needing to equalize the bank out and you know if it's a real little low your battery's going to die prematurely and it's going to drain the entire system but anyway um basically the supercapacitors uh they have a lim unlimited lifespan uh virtually because of the fact that they can be um discharged quickly and recharged quickly without any need of uh any type of charge controller and also for the fact that they release their energy immediately so if my inverter was not connected I'm sorry, if my inverter was connected straight to my um, capacitors, I could actually power this house and the voltage, if the inverter would allow it, would allow um, would continue to go down all the way to zero volts and it would provide as much amperage as needed to create however many watts. Um, you know, a great illustration is if you're at 10 volts and you need 100 watts, it's 10 amps. That's pretty much what you're going to draw. If you're at 9 volts and you need that same 100 watts, you know, it'll basically, it, it'll average out to make it W watts equals amp times volts. So it'll, it'll basically compensate the amperage for that. With that being said, the amps um, draw will continue to go up. It'll drain it a little bit quicker, but it's not nowhere any, I'm sorry, it's nowhere near as uh, quickly as a battery would because you know that same 100 amp actually would cost the battery so around 105 amps 110 amps and converting the energy into usable power for you um, 
Um, one, one thing I want to show you is that my supercapacitors have the ability to go on this system up to 15 volts. I'm building currently another capacitor that has the ability to go all the way to 40 volts. Now you ask why would I do that? Well, I have a wind turbine. If you remember from my first video, I'm using a wind turbine on my system, and I didn't have very high winds, but I found a cool way to wire this up without having to go with one of those uh, charge controllers that basically dump your batteries so that your batteries don't overload. What I'm going to do is wire supercapacitor to the positive and negative of a wind turbine. Let the wind turbine charge the supercapacitor. Obviously, it's going to take a while because of how many amps it's going to take. Um... It's going to hook up to the positive and negative with a diode. I'm going to have the two um, capacitors is what I'm thinking. I'm going to have those two wired up in series to double the voltage and also leave the same amperage so that it takes even longer for the wind turbine to fill it. Now here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to hook it up through this solar charge controller. I'm going to take the 12 volt panel that I have hooked up to it and actually um, move it onto the roof. Um, and put it into a 24 volt um, system with another panel that I got coming in but um, my idea is to use this TPS um, the TPS uh, charge controller um, it, ideally at 15 18 volts and let the uh, voltage basically read out and maybe I can fold this charge controller into thinking that the wind turbine's energy that's going into the charge control or into the supercapacitor is actually energy from a solar panel and it will regulate the voltage going to my batteries. Now if that is something that happens this is going to be revolutionary because wind turbines typically when they're hooked up to battery banks that they are hooked directly up to the battery and then you have some type of charging system that dumps the batteries just to keep them from you know being overcharged or causing gassing and explosions you know and with this new idea oh my goodness supercapacitors don't really get damaged very easy and if I have high voltage basically it can hold that power indefinitely until the batteries are drained to where they need it now obviously I'm still going to have a upload controller built onto it but for now this is my idea and I'm gonna see how this works out I'll post another video when that is ready